This is a video covering the AP exam questions from our first three chapters over the summer homework. And the AP exam contains two parts, a multiple choice section and a free response section. So I've got a few multiple choice questions and uh, we'll go through them in turn. So let's take a look at number one. In one mole of potassium zirconium sulfate trihydrate, this compound right here, there are, and you have to choose how many atoms of, of uh, which element. Now, this is a type of compound called a hydrate. I don't know if you were introduced to these in Chem 1, but essentially water oftentimes can be absorbed by ionic compounds. This is an ionic compound, and water can be incorporated into the formula. And depending on the ionic compound, you have different numbers of waters incorporated. So in this case, you have three water molecules for every one uh, compound unit, you can say, of this compound. And it's a kind of a strange compound, but uh, remember that one mole of anything is Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And what we can say is that if we have one mole of this compound, then we have three moles of water. Meaning if we have one mole of the compound, we have four moles of potassium. Now, if I have four moles of potassium, then I have four times as much, or four times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This is if I have four moles. So four moles equals this many atoms. And in fact, that's where the answer is. The answer is C. You have four moles, or four times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd potassium atoms. The rest of them are incorrect. Um, for hydrogen atoms, if you take a look, there are actually three times two, you have six hydrogen atoms or six moles of hydrogen atoms, so that one's out. Um, sulfur atoms, you actually have four sulfur atoms. Remember, this four distributes to everything in the parentheses, so this one's out. And for oxygen, you actually have, again, four distributes. You have four times four, 16 moles of oxygen, so that's out. And zirconium, you only have one of zirconium. This does not distribute to zirconium. You just have a one here, so that, that's why that one's out, okay? Hopefully that made sense. How about question two? What is the maximum number of moles of Al2O3 that can be produced by the reaction of 0 0.40 moles of aluminum with 0 0.40 moles of O2 oxygen? Now, we're being asked a stoichiometry question. So before we can do any stoichiometry, we have to write a balanced equation. You have to have a balanced equation. So let's go ahead and do that. It says we're producing Al2O3, which means Al2O3 is a product. And we're making it from aluminum and oxygen. So here are our reactants. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. You, you may remember this as a synthesis reaction. Now we have to balance it before we can use stoichiometry on a reaction. So since we have two oxygens and three oxygens, why don't we make both of them into six? We'll double this. We'll triple this. That makes six. So that gives us four aluminum. So we'll put a four in front of here. Now the question is this. We have, we're beginning with an amount of aluminum we're beginning with an amount of oxygen, and we're asked how much product we'll make. Now, this incorporates the idea of limiting reactants. Remember that the one that forms less product is going to be the limiting reactant, and you cannot form more than the limiting reactant. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and react this much aluminum to see how much product is formed. We'll react this much oxygen to see how much product is formed. So let's do that. So we got 0 0.40 moles of aluminum and let's see how much aluminum oxide can be formed in this case the answer is in moles so we'll go from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide that's a one step problem episode one problem so you have moles of aluminum down here we have moles of aluminum oxide up here and the ratio the relationship is four moles of aluminum to two moles of aluminum oxide so you get four on the bottom two on top Effectively, what we've got is we've got 0.4 times 2 divided by 4. This is 1 half. So we're halving this. We're dividing this in half, which means we've got 0 0.20 moles of aluminum oxide. So the first amount makes this much aluminum oxide. We'll do the same thing to the second amount. We've got 0.40 moles of oxygen. Let's go ahead and set up the equation. 3 moles of oxygen, in this case, produce 2 moles of aluminum oxide. And if you divide this, you should get yourself a little uh, more 
than 0.2 because we're dividing by 3. But if you put this in the calculator, you get yourself 0.27 moles of aluminum oxide. So we got these two amounts. Now the question is, which one are we going to really form? It will be the smaller amount. We cannot form more than the limiting reactant because aluminum is the limiting reactant. We don't have enough aluminum to form this much aluminum oxide. So the answer is actually B in this case. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to numbers 3 and uh, 4. So here's 3 and 4. 3 says, what is the percentage yield of oxygen if 12.3 grams of potassium chlorate, given as the molar mass, is decomposed to produce 3.2 grams of oxygen, and they're giving us the molar mass. Remember, these molar masses come from the periodic table. So these are the... Uh, numbers. We have an equation. <clears throat> Before we can use the equation, let's go ahead and balance the equation. This shouldn't be too bad. We got two oxygens, again, three oxygens. A similar picture to what we've seen. Let's get them up to six, and that gets us two potassium chlorides on the right side. Okay, so percent yield. Remember, percent yield, the idea is that when the reaction is run, you don't form 100% of what you predict. So what the equation that's set up is you put your actual yield on top divided by your theoretical. You can say yield. <clears throat> In both these cases, these are yields, times 100. So the actual yield and the theoretical yield comes from stoic. So this number right here comes from stoichiometry. In other words, this is what we'll calculate uh, using our balanced equation. And the actual yield is how much we actually formed. In fact, the actual yield is this number right here. It says decomposed to produce. So this is our actual yield. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to ask, well, how much will this uh, potassium chlorate, how much will it theoretically produce of oxygen? And for that, we need to set up a quick little uh, stoichiometry problem. We're beginning with grams. Let's go ahead and go to moles of the product. And the reason we're going to go to moles, it'll save a step. And the second thing I want to say is that the AP exam, the multiple choice questions like this on the AP exam, do not allow you to use the calculator. That sounds scary, but let me show you. This is why they give you easy numbers. So the first thing we'll do is convert this from grams to moles. So we have 12.3 grams of KClO3. <clears throat> Let's get that into moles. They give us the molar mass as 123 grams in one mole. And the numbers are easy because 12.3 divided by 123 is a tenth. This is 10 times bigger than this, so you actually get 0.1 mole of KClO3. Now, the balanced equation says that 2 moles of KClO3 produce 3 moles of oxygen. So then we can convert from moles of KClO3 to moles of oxygen. And the relationship is 2 moles of KClO3 form 3 moles of oxygen. Now, this may be a little uh, tough to do without a calculator, but you can probably do it. If you think of the 0.1 times 3 as being 0.3, right? Then you got 0.3 divided by 2. Well, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, so 0.3 divided by 2 is 0.15. So this is actually how many moles of oxygen will produce. <clears throat> if you had a little trouble following the math, don't worry too much about it now. But uh, you, you can use a calculator to do this if you want for now. So now we can go ahead. This is our theoretical. Theoretical. Our actual is given to us in grams. But the molar mass of oxygen is, again, 32. Notice 3.2 divided by 32 gives you 0.1. The same picture. If we do the same thing except with oxygen, we'll get 0.1. So uh, I guess you could say our actual is 0 0.10 moles. And then we're going to plug them into here, actual over theoretical times 100. So we have ourselves actual is 0 0.10, theoretical is 0.15 times 100. And ask yourself what this number, here we can kind of guesstimate since it's a multiple choice question. So it can't be 100% because these are not the same. We're actually forming less than 100%. 0.10, we're forming 10 out of 15. Now, it, so we're forming more than half. Notice, right, 10 is 
more than half of 15. So it can't be half and it can't be less than half. And it's actually 67%. You could do this in your calculator and you find 67, but because you cannot use a calculator, we may have to guesstimate like this. Okay, that was a bit, uh, bit long. Let's take a look at the next one. The next one is actually simpler than it looks. <clears throat> Here it says, according to the information in the table below, a one gram sample of which of the following contains the greatest mass of oxygen? So we have four compounds, and the molar mass of each is given from the correct table again. We're asking which one of these has the most oxygen, essentially. Well, the one that has the most oxygen has the least uh, mass of the other element. In other words, if you were to get the percent of oxygen, <coughs> Oops. If you get the percent of oxygen in this, you could do a little calculation, but that would be, I think, a waste of time. Uh, what you could realize is the one that has the most oxygen has the least mass of the other element. So let's think about this. Sodium, uh, if you have a periodic table, you realize that sodium is uh, the heaviest, uh, not the heaviest, sodium is 23 grams. So you got two of them. You got two sodiums here, so I guess times two, you got roughly 46 grams. If you do the same with magnesium, you'll see that you have uh, about 24 grams of magnesium in here. Uh, two potassiums, each is about 39, so almost 40, so you almost have 79 grams of potassium and about 40 grams of calcium. So what you see is that magnesium is the least, which means here you have the most oxygen. Uh, think through that one a little bit. If that one didn't make too much sense, um, you know, we can maybe mention it quickly in class. Okay, and the last one. Let's go ahead and take a look, a look at the last one here. The last one actually has, we're back to uh, the hydrate idea. So we've got ourselves sodium sulfate exhydrate, and it is heated and decomposed. So what we'll do is this is actually a percent to mass, mass to mole problem. I want to do this quickly for the sake of time. What we need to do, in fact, let me just put it on the next video. That'll be easier. Let me go ahead and we'll do this one in video, five, uh, in video two because this one uh, is going to take a little bit more time. I'd rather explain it in a little more detail. So this uh, completes the first video.